Now, I'm sure you've heard the term everything in moderation, but as we can clearly see, demonstrate across society, no one seems to be able to do this. What a lot of people don't know is that these food companies have teams of scientists that work for them whose entire job is to make these foods so addicting that no one can moderate their intake. In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down all the tricks they use to do this. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to teach you exactly how to break your food addiction once and for all. Now, these food scientists have two main objectives. The first being to maximize the amount of pleasure you get from eating the stuff so your brain can't stop thinking about it. You see, humans are wired in a way to either seek pleasure or avoid pain. So when they make these hyper palatable foods that just taste incredible, it releases so much of a hormone called dopamine, which is essentially your pleasure hormone. And the other objective that they have is to make it so that these foods do not fill you up even remotely, so you constantly have to keep eating them. And when you have to keep eating them, you go back and buy more, which maximizes their profit and it ruins your health. The first trick they use is to make it so that each bite has zero aftertaste. You see, when you eat something and there's zero aftertaste, it leaves you unsatisfied. So what do you do? You go back for another bite, and then you go back for another bite, and you repeat the cycle over and over so you eat more of their food. There are quite literally ingredients that they will not use because they know it will leave too much of an aftertaste. One ingredient that they use to ensure that there is no aftertaste present is multidextrin. Now this is a substance that's usually derived from starchy foods such as corn and wheat. And when you include this ingredient in a food, it ensures that there's no aftertaste that lingers afterwards. The next technique that they use is the choice of texture. You see, when you chew, it signals to your brain that you're eating. And so the less you chew, the less your brain thinks you're eating. So what happens is your hunger signaling becomes delayed. Your brain thinks you've eaten less than you actually have, and it delays your hunger hormones. So by opting for foods that are softer in texture, you end up eating more. This is why virtually all processed foods have soft, creamy textures, because your brain doesn't realize how much it's eating, and you just continue to eat the stuff. The next trick that they use is to make foods as high glycemic as possible. The glycemic index is a measurement of how much of a blood sugar spike will a food give you after you eat it. You see, what happens is when you eat something that's high glycemic, is it gives you a massive blood sugar spike. However, here's the thing with when your blood sugar spikes. It comes back down. And it doesn't just stop at its baseline level, it goes below that. And when you're in this state, you become ravenishly hungry. Your body quite literally thinks you've run out of fat. And this is why you get that hangry sensation, where you just feel like you have to eat. In order to do this, they ensure that all the ingredients in their product are high glycemic foods. When they include wheat, they'll make sure they opt for the refined version, with its fibre stripped from it. You see, fibre slows digestion down, which causes less of a blood sugar spike. So when you make something with these refined flours, as well as sugar and other refined carbohydrates, it ensures that as soon as someone eats it, their blood sugar spikes massively. The next thing they do is they target something known as the bliss point. Now what the bliss point is, is it's the perfect ratio of sugar, salt, and fat. Humans are hardwired to seek these three things. They're essential for our survival. There is no single ingredient food present in nature that contains all three of these things. Now having any of these items by themselves triggers a large amount of dopamine for us. So when you get all three of these things and put them in the perfect ratio, our brains are just overwhelmed with pleasure. So this bliss point just gives our brain so much dopamine. And because everything else that we do throughout the day does not give us this amount of dopamine, all it can think about is the tremendous amount of pleasure it got from that food. This bliss point right here is the main reason that so many people are addicted to food. The next thing they do is to ensure that the most addictive substance in the world is in their products. You see so many foods use caffeine in them when they don't even need to. In fact, I bet many of the foods and drinks you're consuming have caffeine in them without you even knowing. You see, there are certain loopholes that companies can use to get caffeine in these foods without having to declare it on the packaging. You must state that there's caffeine in a product if you add it to it. However, when you use ingredients that naturally have caffeine in them, you do not have to declare it in many countries. 90% of the Western world uses caffeine on a day-to-day -day basis. And for anyone who's ever tried to quit, you know how addictive this stuff is. In animal studies, they'll give two animals the exact same drink. However, one has caffeine and one doesn't. And what happens is that over time these animals, when they drink from the two different cups, they start only drinking from the one that contains caffeine. When a food item or beverage contains caffeine, we are much more likely to consume it. And the food companies, they're well aware of this, which is why so many products have caffeine in them. This right here is the main reason why most people can't give up soft drinks. 
They think it's because they love the taste of it so very much, when in reality it's just that when they don't drink it, they're not getting their caffeine fix. The next thing they make sure to incorporate in their foods is the use of artificial sweeteners. Artificial sweeteners are very confusing to the human metabolism. What happens when we drink these things is that our brain senses the sweet taste, and as a result, our blood sugar spikes. So our bodies are expecting calories, but they never come. And as a result, we get hungry. As well as the fact that, like I talked about, when your blood sugar spikes, it crashes back down below its baseline level. Because these foods with artificial sweeteners in them have less calories than what our brain expects, it means that we just keep eating the stuff. These artificial sweeteners can be 200 to 700 times sweeter than regular sugar. And so you can only imagine the amount of dopamine that these things release. Now I'm sure there are many people who think diet drinks are great at aiding their weight loss that will not be very happy with these remarks. But I want you to take a second and think about how hungry you get when you include these things whilst you're dieting. The final trick that they use is to do with the particle size of the ingredients that they use in these foods. When an ingredient has a small particle size, it means that it has more surface area and that it can be digested faster. One of the ways they do this is to turn whole grain ingredients into flours. So when you have these foods which are high glycemic like we talked about earlier, and they have the small particle size, what happens is you eat these things and they're just rapidly digested and therefore your blood sugar just rapidly spikes. And then it just comes absolutely crashing down and all the person who's consumed the stuff can think about is the food. When they do this, it also means that the person eating it has to chew it less, which like we talked about earlier, this is just gonna make it less filling again. The truth about these foods is that it's virtually impossible to moderate. You see, these scientists, they're incredible at their job. I'm sure you've all seen these sellout nutritionists and dietitians online telling you that you have an eating disorder if you don't allow yourself to eat everything. These people have no idea what they're talking about. If moderating food was easy for the average person, we wouldn't have obesity rates like they are. These foods are so addictive and provide your brain with so much dopamine that for many people, if you consume even small amounts of these foods, all you're going to do is think about them all day. The first step to curing your food addiction is to see these things as not food. And that is exactly what they are. These things aren't food. Often, they'll have 50 ingredients, most of which are lab-made chemicals. They have zero nutrients of any kind. And when you eat these things, you're hungrier after you've eaten them than before you ate them. You need to see these things for what they are, an addictive drug. And there's going to be a lot of you who hate me for saying this, but I'm right. In order to get over your food addiction, you must get rid of the stuff completely. In my opinion, the absolute best diet to do this is the proper human diet, a carnivore diet, eating the way our ancestors have always eaten. You're just going to feel so amazing that you're no longer going to want to eat this garbage anyway. Anyways, that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of my content, consider subscribing down below. It's completely free and it means you'll see more videos like this. On screen right now, there are two videos that I think you'll like. The first one breaks down exactly how we know that our ancestors only ate meat, and the second one talks about why I'll never eat a vegetable again. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.